All right. Well, as much as I didn't want to do yet one more Commodore uh, restoration here, um, I had to do this one primarily because there's a few notes that are on here. This one says corrupt video, repairable. So I <laughs> guess I don't know how they figure it's repairable, but okay. Um, but this is the cool part about this. I got this on eBay um, and I saw this and I thought this would be really cool. So there's a note here that was attached to it from April of 1994. That's 27 years ago. Um, keys, ZCBM, don't work. They do work when the keypad is locked um, up to another computer board. Um, so, well, I don't know. So I figured, let's take a look at this. It's been sitting for 27 years unrepaired. You know what? That's just waiting to be revived. So let's get down to this. So the first thing we're going to do is let's open this up. I'm going to put another keyboard um, onto it and see if, you know, and eliminate the keyboard being faulty or the board. If the other keyboard that I put on here has the same faulty keys, then basically it's probably a CIA um, that's bad. So um, let's take a look and see what we got. First of all, I didn't realize that. <laughs> uh, we have one broken key, a broken stem that we'll have to address. And I think someone may have opened this because usually when I take screws off of a keyboard that hasn't been open before, you'll hear a tiny little crack. And I didn't hear it from any one of these screws. Okay, so this keyboard has definitely been opened before because for one, that crack that you heard wasn't coming from this side, it was coming from the other side. But you can see that there's a tab here that's broken. So this has obviously been opened for sure. Okay. Now, while it may have been opened, I don't think anything was done to it because the other thing that I'm noticing, I'll take this LED out of here, is that the, um, the little copper uh, ground thing here is still intact, it's soldered on unless they re-soldered it. But yeah, those solder joints look really bright, but I don't know. It doesn't really matter. It's just observation. So let's get this thing off of here. What is it? Beauty. All right. A typical 25407 board. So zillions and zillions upon zillions of those made. Okay. First thing we want to do, like I usually do, is um, take off, take the SID chip out. Um, and then we'll turn it on and see what we've got. So let's, let's do that real quick. The other kind of messed up thing about this is that none of the chips here are socketed. They're all soldered. So if we find something faulty, we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to deal with unsoldering. So 
All right, let's go ahead and plug this thing in and see what we have to work with here. I'm going to go ahead and, well, can't really plug the keyboard in because of that stem. I have to, I have to pull that stem out. But let, let's just see if it boots up first. Here we go. All right, definitely um, color issue there. So let's go ahead and test. Uh, you know, typically that's just yelling PLA, but like I said, I don't want to be sitting here on soldering if I don't have to, but if we have to, we have to. But let's check the VIC-2 chip. And uh, let's go that route first before we start unsoldering left and right. Okay, so let's go ahead and test, test this chip out real quick here. Okay, so Vic2 failed. Let's make another pass at it just in case. All right, so let's hope we get lucky. Let's replace the Vic2 chip on here. And, uh, Yeah, that solves that garbled screen of ours. Okay, let's make sure that this new chip that I got is good. That's a good Vic2 chip that we're going to put in there. And let's see how this behaves. All right. There we go. All right, that's a good thing. So now that this thing's working, so it was the Vic chip that was bad. Let's go ahead and put the SID back and do a real quick diag on it. I'm putting the diag test, dead test cartridge in right now. All right, and I put the SID chip in, the original one that came with it.
All right. So the SID chip obviously worked. It's not 100% healthy. I heard some little clicking in there when it was uh, going through the voices. But uh, nonetheless, it's a, it's, a, it's a decent enough chip where we can leave it in. So, all right. I guess that takes care of it's interesting someone was in here because they did solder that because look there's a little piece of solder that I just took off of this thing <laughs> that's so funny so 27 years has been sitting um oh there goes the test again let's go ahead and shut this thing off all right um so that leaves the keyboard. So let's go ahead and plug in um, a working keyboard before I fix that one. And let's see if those keys stick. It was Z, C, B, and M. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on. All right, Z, C, B, M. Okay, so those work. And um, it said that it had an issue when it was, when the keypad is locked. No, I think what they meant is they don't work. They do work when the keypad is locked up to another computer. Uh, hooked up. That's, that's what I was, I misread this. So basically what this says is that um, they don't work, but they do work when the keypad is hooked up to another computer. So the keypad was fine. We just need to replace that stem. So anyways, I think this is going to be just fine. Okay. So this pretty much leaves us with the keyboard and the keyboard has this one key and needs a new stem here on the backspace key. So first thing is first, Let's take this middle piece here out that's broken, the stem. Being a little stubborn. May have to resort to drilling it out. There we go. All right. All right, so we got the stem out of here. And so now we gotta replace the stem here. So let's see if we can just do this without having to go through a whole lot of disassembly here. We only need to take this little corner out. Fortunately, this stem is right here. to take the whole keyboard off, I don't need to, so. All right. Yeah. 
All right. So here's the broken stem right here. Managed to push right out of the corner there. And so now we'll just put this new one in there. So, sorry, I'm doing this off camera a little bit here, but it's easier for me to take a look at it if I can do this. here all right so I got the stem back in to that little corner there fortunately it was on the corner if it was in the middle of the keyboard we'd have to take this whole thing apart but because it was in the corner there we were lucky that we can just lift up that one corner and get it replaced not that there's anything wrong taking the whole keyboard apart, because then you can clean the whole thing, but... Alrighty. spring for it as well. I'm gonna spring here. And let's get this key back on. All right, so let's test this guy. and see if those three keys that uh, were labeled as bad work. Here we go. All right, Z, C, B, M. There you go. So I'm just randomly keying, hitting keys at this point. So one, two, three, four, five, six, so yeah. How about the function keys? Yep. All right. So there we go. So that was that was it. <laughs> 27 years sitting idle waiting to be repaired. And um there we go. So let's make this official by just putting this back together again. Here's the bad stem. We'll give this a little bit of the Windex treatment and clean it up. But outside of that, I think we can call this done. 97 years in the making, um, you know, not working. Um, it's pretty cool that we could bring it back together. It wasn't very much trouble. This is, the VIC-2 was uh, the only chip that we needed to replace on it. And fortunately, it was um, one of the only two chips that was socketed. So there we, there we have it. Uh, I had to make this video. I didn't realize it was gonna be this short, but I'm glad that it was because I've made a, a ton of C64 videos over the last couple months. So I think it's time to change it up and get into you know, RCs or something um, for a little while. So anyways, hope you enjoyed it. Um, and like I always say, live life to the fullest. You only live once. Peace out. <laughs>